good afternoon, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and everybody who's going to view this video. I have a great pleasure today. I'm here with one of my best friends, at least that's what I call him when he ain't around. This is our chief, Michael Reeves. How are you, sir? How are you doing, Trey? Nice seeing you. Man, I'm always glad to see you. Now, as a local pastor, you know, I was really overwhelmed about everything that's been going on in the media and what have you. And so I wanted to hear from you because I have a position where I see a certain side of it. But I know you have a position that many may not understand. So if you can just give us the viewpoint of our police department concerning what's happened in Dallas and in Minnesota and also in Louisiana. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, I, my viewpoint on what happened in Minnesota um, and Louisiana is I really have no viewpoint at this time. Okay. I'm one of those people that wants to wait till all the facts are in. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't want to jump to uh, assumptions. I do not have all the information that their investigators uh, have. I have not seen everything come out. I'm like everybody else in the country that's gotten pieces of uh, media feed and um, saw items on, on different social media accounts and also witnessed a short um, uh, Facebook video or something of that nature. But to be candid, I don't know all the facts. So until all those facts come out and you can separate the facts from the untruths and the rumors and that type of thing, then I, I don't think it's appropriate to really make a comment on how we feel about that. So, Chief, you're actually telling me and our viewers that we shouldn't base our lives on what we see on Facebook. Uh, no, I don't believe we should face our lives on what we see on Facebook. You know, the video generally tells no lies. Okay. But there's a story behind the video, mm -hmm. and there's things that angles and stuff like that, so you have to wait and see. I'm one that says, let's wait and see all the facts in. The facts are what they are, okay. and that'll tell us how to proceed. Okay. In terms of Dallas, um, we're compounding tragedies here. Mm -hmm. Any loss of life, whether it be in Minnesota or Louisiana, throughout the country, or any loss of life of police officers is compounding the tragedy of what's going on in this country. Um, I cannot fathom the, the hurt that that community is going through, nor can I fathom the hurt that's going through the communities in Minnesota or Louisiana. Mm. Um, I know that uh, uh, the loss of one life, let alone five at one time, is a very, has a very sobering effect upon the profession and law enforcement. Wow. Wow. We feel that even up here in Michigan. Can you say more than to uh, what's the feeling then in our local community? You know, I, I, I can sense there's some apprehension in our local community. Mm -hmm. There's apprehension in our police officers. Um, people are very uneasy. People are, are guarded in what they say. I've noticed in the last uh, few days we have many citizens coming up to us and shaking your hand, asking for a hug, telling us thank you for what we do. Uh, we've had citizens send in food and, mm. and, and feed department members and, mm. and send in cars you and telephone. Any of that left? Any of that left? No, that's all gone. Was, you know that. That wouldn't last here. Well. But uh, that's going on. At the same point, um, I met a family today that came into the community. They were in a restaurant that I was in. And uh, uh, an African-American family, a lady and, and four young kids. And uh, I looked at and I watched how those kids looked at us, mm. uniformed police officers. And that bothered me, because mm. I could see the apprehension on their face. Mm. They weren't sure. They, 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 there was a, a, a look on their face, and that bothered me. And the littlest guy out of the group started waving. So I went over and engaged him and started high-fiving him, trying to talk to him. And the other kids just kind of watched. They were a little bit older. The little guy and me were having a good time, and I said hi to him, and how's it going, and that type of thing. And then I walked away. And I noticed as we sat a couple tables apart that the kids would keep turning their head to look. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, it, that bothers me that uh, children and anybody, it doesn't matter if it's just children, but anybody is that apprehensive about police or police in uniforms. So any time that we can break down those barriers and say not all police officers are bad. Some make terrible mistakes or do things intentionally that, that are wrong and they should be held accountable. But the vast majority of people that are police officers, where there are over 750,000 police officers, wow. one half of 1% okay. are bad police officers. Just like not all blacks are bad, not right. all Polish are bad, not all right, right, Latinos right, right, are bad. Right, right. Let's not characterize the actions of a few and paint everybody with that same brush. How can we tangibly touch our community. I know some people want to, we want to pray, we want to walk, we want to support, and all those things are good. 
but what can we tangibly do in working with you as a pastor, as a community leader? That's a great question, and, and I would agree with you. We hire uh, people not because of their skills, partially because of their knowledge and their ability, but because of their moral character, mm -hmm. their integrity, understanding of how to deal with people. And you deal with a, a wide range of people in, in, in your crossings. Mm -hmm. And I would say we do the same thing we're doing now. You know that day in and day out, mm -hmm. you can call the chief and sit down and talk to him about things in the community. Mm -hmm. Our police officers are no better than support of the community they get. Mm. Can you say that again and look in the camera and say that one more time? <laughs> Our police officers no are better. no better than the community that they serve. They get their support. They get their empowerment from the community. We're pretty lucky here. Now, I'm not saying I don't have officers that have bad days. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I know of no officers that I have that have integrity problems or things of that issue. But on the same token, we do have people that make mistakes and do things wrong. And they are held accountable. Mm -hmm. But in the same token, we are the face of the community, and the community is the face of the police department. Mm -hmm. We can't get anything done in the community without the community being in partnership with us. And it's our mission that we have to develop more one-on-ones. Me and you talking, us driving down the street, getting out of that car, and talking to the two neighbors who are standing over the fence. Gotcha. Us talking to a crime victim, regardless of their color, what is the issues? What can we do for you? What can we help? Trying to solve people's issues and problems, but not being afraid of each other and not, right from the get-go, being concerned because you're black, I'm white, uh, complainant's Latino. Somebody, you can't yeah. worry about that stuff. Absolutely. Okay. Wow. And I appreciate you, Chief. Thank you for taking thank the time. Thank you. Thank you. Chief. And uh, thank you all for taking time to listen to me.